AI has dropped the cost of business writing to nearly zero, and most of the businesses I work with or know about are drowning in AI documents and have huge issues with AI business writing. This video is how you troubleshoot those, what the principles are for using AI well in business writing situations, and then I'm going to walk through an actual example of a prompt I'm using that sets a much higher bar for AI business writing than I've typically seen, and we'll just go through it. So first, Let's get into the principles. The first thing I want you to keep in mind overall is that the real bottleneck in AI-assisted writing is never capability of AI. People think it's the model. It's not the model. Don't let anyone tell you it's the model. It's organizational ability to articulate what constitutes good work. And typically, that means we've relied on individuals to have instincts for what constitutes good work instead of actual structured information about what constitute good work. AI forces tacit knowledge into explicit standards, and that is very, very hard for most businesses. You cannot rely on, I know it when I see it, because AI cannot read your mind. It is not that good. It's never going to be that good. Every quality criteria needs to be concrete enough to specify, to test, and to verify. That is the only way through on the business writing side. And if people say, well, I don't have time for that, I've got to ask you, do you have time for the business writing you're drowning in? Because I have lost track of the number of people who are like, I cannot keep up with the business writing. It is too much. Like people are sending me AI slop at work. Well, the quality criteria needs to be defined to make that go away. So what does that actually look like? First, understand that there is a specification bottleneck. The barrier is not how fast can I write this anymore, it is how clearly can I articulate what I need. Every time you have ambiguity in your specs for a doc, that is amplified through generation. It is not reduced. People sometimes think AI can reduce ambiguity by adding detail, but anyone who's worked with AI a lot will tell you it doesn't reduce ambiguity, it enhances it. And when it adds helpful detail, it makes it worse. So the organizations that succeed are actually not those with the best writers. I know that's very counterintuitive. They are those who can articulate the quality standards explicitly enough to encode them in prompts that you can work with. Now, writers can absolutely help with that. Good writers are hard to find, but we are moving from raw ability to generate text according to a congruent prompt framework or a congruent template as a goal, and we're getting into a world where we are are just needing to specify our requirements really, really clearly. It reminds me of like wearing a product hat and defining product requirements. Very, very similar, except now your product is the doc. You also have a fundamental evaluation issue because of the number of prompts. I've talked in the past about how we have this issue with resumes. Really, it's with all knowledge work in the business. We don't have time to evaluate everything that got done, which means that we have to figure out how to scale evaluation. That is one of the fundamental challenges for businesses that want to go faster. And I believe firmly that scaling evaluation means putting AI on the evaluation side, not just the writing side. And I want to talk about that a little bit more because I, I think we miss that. It is absolutely possible. I've done it. I've written I'm writing a prompt for this article to talk through how you evaluate and build a prompt, build a Claude skill that helps you to evaluate. I've done it. I'm doing it. it. You can make your job so much easier if you are just willing to let AI take a first pass and give it really clear requirements on what good looks like. I also want to go beyond just, hey, you need to specify. The other core issue is that we typically have long-standing information architecture problems in our documents at work that we just paper over and that we are not going to be able to paper over when AI is writing because fundamentally what AI does is it exposes information asymmetries, informational vagueness that previously hid in a lot of our writing because people wrote it and you just assumed that people were doing their best thinking. One of the good things about the AI age is we now don't assume that everyone's doing their best thinking, which means we critique more, which is actually healthy. So when we're critiquing, I want us to think of a few things in this information architecture bucket. One, documents really ought to be written for goals and decisions, and they aren't always. And so if you can't tell if this document enables person X to make choice Y, or if this well-structured information enables you to make a big decision, if you, if you don't know what it looks like and why you're reading it, it's, it was going to be useless anyway, right? But now we blame the AI. Your goal at this point 
is actually to get rid of that vagueness you tolerated in the past in the business and define the informational architecture of the document. Your structure is the business logic, not just a template. So many times, if someone gives you like a product requirements document, or if they give you a business memo or a press release, when they give it to a human, you get a template you actually don't get the logical underpinnings of the doc and people end up learning it from experience. Templates just let you fill in the boxes without thinking. And when you hand AI only a template in the prompt, that is what you get. And that is why so often when I'm called in to help with business writing prompts, people say, I don't know what I did wrong. I gave it the template and it filled out the template and it's terrible, it's crap. Well, you didn't give it the, the business logic. You didn't give it a, a decision interface to work against. You didn't give it a goal for the document. That's why your writing is terrible. If you don't give it that intent, the business writing is gonna fail. So the other piece here, this is very counterintuitive. You can't just give it a goal and give it business logic in my experience. You also have to give good failure tests. You have to insist that you know what bad looks like. Isn't that funny? Isn't that counterintuitive? But if you're trying to tell the AI how to do something well, it really helps if you have five to seven examples of the kinds of quality problems you have with these kinds of documents. Like, wow, this technical specification document is really over on the design and insists on a microservices architecture when we don't use that. Great, that's a failure example. Or this press release. It is way too hypey, and I hate the hype in this press release. It doesn't respect the actual product capabilities. This executive summary and this executive memo is too vague. I need more specificity. Understand where your organization today fails to communicate information, and you will understand how to work with AI to write better. This is, I'm gonna repeat it again, a people problem at root. It is not the model's fault here, people. It is our ability in organizations to communicate intent clearly that is governing our ability to work with AI. And we're not doing it well. I wanna tease out some of the organizational dynamics too. Specifically, one of the things that I've noticed that's subtle but painful, we are converging on voice because of AI and that is leading to informational loss in business systems. So we have an AI default voice and too few people understand how to push that voice into something that communicates th their intent clearly. I'm not talking about style here. I'm talking about the ability to communicate clearly with what really matters. And I think the default voice that AI has obscures that, right? The default voice is diplomatically hedged. It's pseudo comprehensive. It's stylistically extremely bland. And you don't have the ability to carry conviction with that voice if you want to make a bet. You don't have the ability to articulate real specificity, but in the same document to articulate this area is vague and uncertain. And I want to admit that up front. Good quality writing has that range and AI if you just prompt it vanilla, does not. And that leads to critical information loss. And that is part of why businesses feel like they're drowning. This information is not super high quality. And I'm gonna say again, it is absolutely possible to do that. You can make high quality documents with AI. The last thing I wanna call out before I go over and I show what I mean is iteration diagnosis. So this is, sounds really complicated, but very simply, we need to diagnose the failure of people to iterate well with writing. In other words, people are trying to say, make it better on their business documents, and that is all they're writing, and it's terrible, and it's not working. But no one knows how to do it better unless they're educated. And what they don't realize is that it is a people problem to communicate intent, and that they have to specify their intent more clearly if they're not getting a draft they like. So I'm gonna come back to the like the core of this issue and then I'm gonna show you how I'm addressing it with a specific prompt. I actually put together a whole bunch of prompts and a Claude skill for this because I want you to be equipped and I'm gonna show you one of the prompts and how it works. So the thing to remember is because AI assisted writing is exploding because organizations are drowning, we have that AI generation problem. The cost of information is zero. We need to therefore put a premium on our intent Otherwise we degrade informational signal through our businesses and it is hard to make decisions and we feel like we're drowning and it has real career implications and real dollars and cents implications. I am passionate about good business writing. I love it. 
it is getting hard to find because people don't know how to prompt. Let's get to an actual prompt. Okay. This is an example of a prompt that I think is high quality. It is also designed to be modular and changeable so you can make it the way you want. Let's get into it. This is for meeting notes. It's the simplest possible one. I have a bunch of other prompts for more complex docs. Meeting notes are overlooked because most of the time, if you go into a generic AI transcript and you get meeting notes, it's just a generic summary that's very vanilla of what was there. I wanted to be more opinionated because I wanted to carry through the principle that you need to have intent around what you're doing. So. We have contacts, date, attendees, which should be pullable from the meeting note raw, purpose of meeting, input provided, and you can paste your transcript there. And then you're asking for a very specific output. And you can modify this when I tell you why I put what I did. Your goal here is to create notes that help the team execute, right? Execute on what was discussed. There is a specific goal for this. The notes are used in, and then there's a context for this, right? You can decide where they're used. You then have a required structure. Did you make decisions? Do you have action items? Are there open questions that were discussed? What were the key discussion points? The vanilla notes I get, look, I love granola. I love some otter, right? There, there's these AI notes. They do not do this. They do not help you encode intent. It is up to you to bring this level of clarity. And I want to help, but there's no substitute for that intent. The AI won't bring it. You have constraints. You have a total length that you have to keep to, you have decisions, you have to define an owner by name, you have action items, you cannot include pleasantries or general discussions, you may not infer, you may not guess. This is the tone, and then here are validation quality checks. Every decision must have a name decision maker, every action item must have an owner, no action item is allowed to be vague, open questions must have or assigned owners. If any check fails, revise before outputting. Is this perfect? No prompt is perfect. Is this going to get you a long way on intent? Yes. And then I want to get into, and I do, why the prompt works, right? It communicates purpose. It communicates structure as logic. And you can change that structure if you want a different intent. There's an eval mode. There's a failure mode. Well, let's look at how to customize it, right? And I include that too, right? For your workflow, you can change it up. You can change it to your organization's voice. You can have different meeting types. You can have a sprint goal instead. You can have failure modes that are different. And then I can give you an example of an output, right? This is what a good output looks like. This is what a terrible output looks like, right? And this is very similar to the AI notes I get generically. Frankly, ChatGPT launched a meeting notes feature that looks a lot like that top part. This is part of how I know we're losing good quality business intelligence. Like the bottom example is going to be much more informative for the business than the top. So please, please, I have a bunch of these prompts. I don't care if you use my prompts or not. Please put intent into your business AI writing. That is the key. And if prompts help you scale that across the business, if Claude's skills help you scale that across the business, I built both of those, that's great. But that there is no substitute. You, you cannot get away from the need for humans to define what good looks like for AI and to define requirements. And to be honest with you, that is the thing I'm excited about. We have sat for a long time with the assumption that human best effort is kind of the bar for docs. And we just all have like I worked at Amazon and we had like a bar for docs that floated around best based on the best human writer in the team, in the department, et cetera. You don't have to have that anymore. You can have a really consistent, high quality bar and you can know whether someone is writing to that bar or not. And people ask me all the time, well, does this mean people won't think anymore? I, I dare you. I dare you. Are you going to think less if you go through this process, if you actually define intent for your business with writing? No, you are going to think more. You are going to think harder. You're going to have to work harder to communicate all of this to people because so much of it was vague and lived in people's heads. Well, not anymore. And the reason why you're going to have to do this is because the alternative is not what we had pre-2022, where everyone wrote everything. The alternative is AI slop forever because... AI is out of the box. Everyone's using it. And everybody I know at work that's drowning in AI docs, which is a lot of people, well, that's not going to stop. The people making them aren't going to stop because they think it's productive. We need AI education that emphasizes quality, that emphasizes the different ways we need to think. I hope this video has helped you think about how our brains need to change to communicate effectively with AI when we are writing. Best of luck out there and may you long save and long preserve your business from AI slop and bad business writing. I hope these tips have helped.